recording. I'm only going to stream for like one or two hours because that's how much space I have left. I'm still uploading the Dark Siders video. What? You can see, right? Yeah. Since you know I'm new to flight simulator games. This is a, simula this is a simulator game, right? Or not really. Oh, okay. Does the color of the sky mean anything special <coughs> to you? It does to me, a hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You no, know, Abby. I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. <laughs> Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful. Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. as fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 Gs at least. Damn, 
I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusian emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Crap. It should have been my event to be a piece of junk. Should have built a return to. been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier, our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhan ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will... What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft confirmed overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble. All units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill. Well, let's hope the game runs fine for you. Uh, the, the F-16 is the only starting plane you have for now. F-16? Yeah. Uh... Well, again, it's also the special weapons, but since you don't have any other set, you go, you go, all, go standard. Mood Squadron, aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. But I let me know if it's being laggy or something. Okay, okay. <coughs> Does she live? Radar sight still silent. Scramble. Yeah. Get those birds in the sky. What? We're sitting ducks. Does she live? What's happening? Bombers in something. You'll see. Don't know how many. Let's clear that runway. We don't got all day here. Main squadron head to runway. Give me spoilers at least. Column squadron take off. <laughs> no. Link to sky you spoil Han Solo. Hurry, main squadron. <laughs> Trigger your call sign is page two. Verify and read back. Page two, clear for takeoff. Your situation is tight. It's a hell of a welcoming party, but we have faith in you. Good luck. Control, do me a favor and get that bird in the air ASAP. Hear that? Column squadron and your wingmen are airborne. Take off and form up with range one. Page 2 altitude restriction is lifted. Good luck. The carrier. Whoa. Looks like the harbor's taken a lot of damage. Can't have any more casualties. Time to stop the bullshit. Mage 2, form up with Mage 1. All aircraft, let's do this. Golem Squadron, it's go time. Roger that. Uh, no more understanding. Okay, okay. This is the AWACS Skykeeper. <laughs> Take down all unidentified bombers. They don't have many escorts. They hit our radars hard in the last attack. Expect the worst and stay sharp. Welcome. Trigger, I'm your wingman. You fly with me now. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Okay, here we go. Looks like bombers have been located. It's showtime, Trigger. Let's see if you can handle the spotlight. You're a good pilot, or so I told them. I had to fill an empty spot, so play along. 
It's still a leash, though. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you use your bumpers to, like, uh, uh, steer the plane left and right without, uh, like, you know, uh, actually rolling. <laughs> I don't know why you guys want to try this shit. Too early. You gotta wait for the red target lock to appear. Okay. H2, missile launch. Enemy bomber confirmed down. Good job, H2. I saved America! Trigger, switch your radar. Yeah, we just won't play. There it is, sitting there all pretty, just waiting to be taken. Mage 2 crashed! <laughs> well, that, that was a quick adventure. We just want to know if the plane works. <laughs> mage 2, warm up with Mage 1. All aircraft, let's do this. Oh my Mage's god. Water, it's go time. Is this how they really Roger turn? Fucking shit. Understand. Well, yeah, in real life, you turn a plane sideways and then you would like basically steer up or down to like, you know, go in that direction. Take down all unidentified bombers. So they don't have many escorts. They hit our radars hard in the last attack. Expect the worst and stay sharp. We'll go. Trigger, I'm your wingman. Fly with me now. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Well, you better get used to it quick because after the first two tutorial missions, the game's gonna pick up the pace. But I basically always, uh, majority of planes you go against always take like two missiles to take down, so whenever the target like appears, just you know, press the missile button twice. Okay, here we go. Around, Looks like missiles. bombers have been located. Run out. Yeah, trigger. like you can see it on the right there. Like um, uh, the MSL is basically short for missile, you have 70 missiles. Oh. Like, you can, like basically you can quickly shoot a two in a row by you know, quickly pressing the button. So, but uh, uh, there's no way to finish Yeah. Yeah, so you better make use of it. And uh, the 4AM stuff, basically underneath the missile, is basically is your special weapon. Like how much you have of those. Then uh, uh, FLR is short for flare. When you, when you hit like uh, the, I think it was either the L3 or R3, whatever it's called, then uh, you deploy flares that is uh, therefore like offending off uh, incoming missiles. And the DMG is basically short for damage. If you're lost, you can always hold down both uh, bumpers at the same time to engage the autopilot and automatically level you off. But, but uh, basically, uh, uh, the, the uh, targets which are marked have a red TGT next to them are basically main targets. Those are the ones you have to destroy in order to succeed the mission. Any other targets are basically bonus targets which are, so say, optional. You can destroy them, but you don't have to. So if you want a more MRP, I would recommend doing so. Watch out for the support aircraft. Remember, the more MRP you have in the end, the quicker you can get uh, play, better planes and stuff like that. So, yeah. He's mine, he's not getting away. Final three, I like how you only always shoot one missile. Why the missile is really low, yeah. You lied to me. No, no, I kinda said you can shoot uh, two missiles at once. Yeah, I know, but the missile is really low. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, basically, once you shoot a missile, that currently shot missile has to reload before that knife and all of them is available. But you can shoot it. Yeah. Like, uh, do you see those two uh, missile symbols next to your plane icon? Basically, yeah, basically, it means both missiles are currently ready, so you can shoot both at the same time.
Oh yeah, uh, also, uh, uh, you can uh, hold on the triangle button to focus on your target so you easier know where it is. Yeah, well, you need that. <laughs> and, uh, and quickly tapping uh, triangle basically switches for your currently active targets. So for example, if you want to uh, target a different target, you press the triangle button to select a different one. Of course, you've got to be closer uh, to uh, enemies actually in order to, you know, have the target drop. Yeah, I'm fucking sucking. <laughs> hey, hey, music for the loser, right? No, I got This is much loser. I would recommend staying. <laughs> yes, but I, I would recommend staying away from clouds. They you know obstruct your visibility. Roger that. But I remember, again, I said if you just want to steer slightly left or right, use the bumpers, so you don't have to uh, engage in parole. Also, uh, basically, since this is a startup plane, its stats are obviously very low. The more planes you get later on, you know, the better they will be and everything. Like you know, faster acceleration, better turning, uh, everything. So, so you know. That's what it means to be in an element. You gotta keep an eye out for enemy bombers. Okay, here we go. Looks like bombers have been located. It's showtime, Trigger. Let's see if you can handle the spotlight. Show up too early. You're a good pilot. So I told you, I had to fill an empty spot, so play along. Yeah, that's it's another thing. If, if you come up to an enemy, you want to like sort of say slow down, or else you overshoot the target, sort of say as you just did. Also, if you uh, hit the brakes or whatever and then turn, you do like a high G turn, meaning you turn faster for a short time. <coughs> what, what would you say in the last part? Uh, you turn uh, uh, sh uh, f like you're turning is sharper if you hit the brakes and the steer at the same time, sort of say. Then you do like a high G turn. Enemy bomber confirmed down. But can you get out of tricky situations? For example, you're diving down at the ground at the moment. You just hit the brakes and then steer up or down. You know, so say no, you do like a high G turn to quickly get yourself out of it. Like you know, get yourself in a straight position again. So say. There it is, sitting there, all pretty, just waiting to be taken. Uh, the, the second mission, like first mission, already died twice. Shush, man, I'm not used to flight games, okay? The only ones I played was Crimson Skies, but I, they, they never had inverted controllers. Inverted? Well, you can, you can change that. Really? Yeah. With my system? No, so it should be on the controls. Yeah, like I uh, pitch controls, like I uh, switched that to inverted. Yeah, now you should go up when you press up. Okay. So if that makes it easier for you, then yeah. I mean, this is inverted now, the other ones are default, that's also how it works in real life. Yeah, yeah. Like, you pull down to go up, basically. Introduce ourselves. Are you using the... Armor fuel storage is intact. I'm asking for another round. All escorts form up for another attack. But I kind of said, remember till like your uh, target thing shows up red, like the light, you know, like it has a red, you know, square, and then shoot both missiles. Like quickly hit the uh, missile button twice. Also press triangle to uh, change your current plan. Like uh, target is not active. Not hold. Like press. Like you know, quickly tap it. Yeah, now it's fine. Basically, your currently active target is always blinking, 
And if it isn't blinking, then it means that's not your current active target. Mage 2, missile away. Target confirmed down. Looking good, Mage 2. That, that means uh, the enemies behind you are getting a lock on you. Like it says like warning uh, when uh, when like they try to get a lock on you and it makes like a, a you know missile alert when there's a missile actually coming for you. It, it locks onto multiple targets at once. Yeah, as you see. Yeah, basically the 4 AAM is short for 4 air-to-air -air missiles, so to say. Like, it can lock up to 4 targets and, like, well, take them 4 targets at once if they hit. But therefore, you know, the supply is more limited. Skykeeper, this is Mage 1, over. Tally 2, bandits. Copy that. It's a bomber and an escort. Hello there, Trigger. Settle down. Let's see. Mage 2, maintain your element with Mage 1. Do not break off. Mage 1, make sure he doesn't do anything stupid. Welcome. Call him 2, let's maintain element. Copy that, Commander. I've got your six covered, sir. Radio. <coughs> but I, I just found it amusing that like, the music is all heroic, despite the fact that in the starting mission there's absolutely nothing happening. Like, uh, compared to later missions where like the action really picks up, this is like, just easy, easy, whatever. But uh, uh, with the 4 AMs, basically wait till all missiles are locked onto a target and don't just shoot instantly, so to say, you know. Like that, basically up to 4 oh, targets will have a red uh, square then once they're locked on. That's how you make effective use of that. But yeah, there's like a, a several other special uh, weapons to say which have like different, you know, uses and all that shit later on. You, you'll see whenever you get to them. Hesitating for a split second could be the difference between life and death. Stay sharp, think fast. Roger that. I get a break. If you're too slow, your plane will stall. <coughs> you know, just like in real life, when you're too slow, you fall out of the sky. Actually, if you want to see some more fancy special effects, uh, basically, uh, shoot a... Uh, like shoot two missiles after an enemy, but hold down the button on the second missile. Yeah, yeah, you can do it on the first one as well, but like only on the, you know, killing missile that actually show you that kill then, so to say. It's so cool. Well, I know what movie I'm gonna get. <laughs> Watch your speed.
But I basically the big number uh, next to the name or whatever, or above the name, tells you how far they are away. Like how many kilo, uh, meters, so to say. And like, a missiles usually have like a lock-on range of like, I think, I think standard missiles lock-on range is like 2000 or so. Or 1800, something like that. Look at the minimap. Remember, pr press a triangle to like, uh, you know, s uh, circle through targets. Well, no, I don't, but I always like uh, calling it, you know, that because I don't know, it's like more recognizable than why. But then now you see it has like a TGT on the arrow as well, that means uh, that's like uh, it's currently locked onto a target, but not anymore. So it's just, uh, Yeah, you also gotta make sure that you are in a good line to an enemy because the missiles can't, you know, just turn a uh, hairpin turn in the air, you know. You gotta shoot, uh, like, you shoot best is like uh, going behind an enemy and then shooting because if you shoot from the side or something, you know. It's still alive. What? Finish it off. Yeah, like uh, so, some uh, enemies, like a bigger tank, your targets require more missiles. Usually, majority of the enemies go down in two hits, but some require like three. To Gollum and Mage. Job well done. All bombers are down. Our radar shows no sign of bandits. You're in the clear. Mission accomplished. Go with me. Yeah, I think you're gonna say your first try, Lon. Don't try to be a hero. I want you to make it back in one piece, you hear? Yeah, I gotta side with the boss man on this. Column Squadron, this is HQ. Did you confirm any drones? What's the deal with all the drones? Column 1, return to base and report for debriefing. <laughs> I am Princess Rosa Cassette Delis of the Kingdom of Arugia. Citizens of Arugia. Tricky, your call sign is page two. Verify and read back. Mage 2 is clear for takeoff. Every flight. You can skip it. It's a hell of a welcoming party. But we have faith in you. Cool, I can see a movie. <coughs> we are currently assessing the damage to the base. We have confirmed that the aircraft carrier Albatross was sunk. We know the attacking bogeys were from Arusha. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhin continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost by failing to recover from the opening blows. That means successfully retaliating was very important. You may have turned the tides of battle here. You have our thanks. Yeah, you can also just get this on screen here. Yeah. Like you don't have to watch it fully. As of 1 p.m. today, hey. the Kingdom of Arugia has declared war on, on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a <coughs> statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Ocea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country, 
According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the department as to the fate of Ocean carriers currently at sea. Hold on, I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erujian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erujia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhan peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. During the air raid, the Osean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. The world was screwed. 20 years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhans, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha, paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. But to the folks in Erujia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Erujia went from being a republic, back to being a kingdom. <coughs> when they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erujian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erujian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erujia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. Yay! I crashed in a bombed out Ocean Air Force base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arusia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. 
For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire, the tower had a searchlight and machine guns, and a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base, but half the tanker trucks were just big balloons, and the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. Like it looks so full. The whole place was just one big fat lie. <coughs> the only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought, that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> and set the dogs on me. Come on, man. What? I want to know what happens. Don't worry, you will. More will be explained by us. Ah, come it. on, I gotta work for my story. <laughs> yes, fuck you. <laughs> Eruja has made a declaration to the Ocean Federation and all countries on the Yuzhan continent stationing the IUN peacekeeping force that we are now at war. Right after the declaration was made, surprise attacks began around the continent that have inflicted major damage to our armed forces. Forces aligned with Arusia are currently appearing throughout Yuzha. The combination of these forces has overwhelmed the majority of the continent, and they are now encroaching on us in the east. Additionally, the multinational space elevator has been seized by the Arusian military. After the previous war, the space elevator became both a symbol of peace and a valuable asset in the fight against growing energy concerns. Whoever has control of it will have enormous influence over the entire continent. We cannot turn a blind eye to this critical situation. The Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron has been entered into the order of battle to reclaim the elevator as an advance element. First, you will attack all hostiles coming in the east of Schofield Plateau to stop any interference with the Allied ground troops. The enemy has deployed several vehicles equipped with anti-air radar along the roads. You are to destroy them. They should not pose much of a threat. However, there is a high likelihood that the attack will draw more enemy air support. If that happens, fight them off swiftly and establish air superiority. Uh, basically, this is the aircraft tuner there. You can basically spend your, uh, what's it called? Your MRP then in order to unlock, you know, new parts, planes, all the shit like that. And basically, skill points. Yeah, basically. And this is why I said again, uh, like, the more, uh, you know, score you earn in the mission stores afterwards, uh, the more you can spend for them. How much do I have? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Well, I would, I would I technically recommend uh, doing another mission and saving up for another plane. Because this mission is like still easy anyways, it's still a tutorial mission, so yeah. Sorry, the Well, well, that's the, that's the, uh, you know, term, so to say, used uh, by, well, you know, air forces, so to say, that you, you know, sort up on a runway, so to say. Like, you know, get up, so to say, pre prepare to take off. Well, we Just sorty. I have never heard of that term until now. <laughs> yeah, guys, it's, it's an air force uh, thing. The current target is on rails, but there's still military vehicles and anti-air weaponry. Destroy the target. But HQ has made it clear that no harm should come to civilians and no damage is to be done to public facilities. But, uh, any aircraft shot down could land in civilian territory. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. Do you have visual on the anti-air radar vehicles? They should be close. 
Oh yeah, your 4 a.m. Yeah. missiles, those, those are just air missiles, you can't use them against ground targets. Reason why they have like an X on them, that means you can't uh... target them. So you have to use normal missiles against like ground targets, unless you have like special uh, a special weapon, which is made for, you know, ground assault. Also switch targets. You know, oh, while well, you got it, then it's machine gun. I mean, when it's a, you don't have to listen to the pull up thing. When it says pull up, it just means you're really close to the ground. Well, they are behind ground, and they are, they are not currently your active target. Again, I said in, to, in order to make something active target, you have to you know press uh, the uh, you know Y button. High above it looks like really good, of course, but uh, close to the ground you can see that, you know, well, low detail and stuff. But, but, but I mean, honestly, uh, it, it, this looks still pretty fucking good for what it is, because you know how much, like, uh, space stuff like that would take up if it, uh, you know, a big ass place like that at the detail. Also, uh, ground, ground targets only require one missile, you don't have to shoot with them. Also, if, if like a target still say has like, you know, lines, like it's not fully like lined or whatever, it has like, you know, it's like it's separated into, yeah, that basically means it's behind the object where you can see it currently. Well, basically on the, on the minimap you can see where the missiles are coming from. Like it shows you like white lines, and those white lines are basically the missiles. And then you basically just have to well avoid them by flying ball. Hey, wait, that's all good. Don't waste them all. What do you mean? I, you said I haven't been in No, no, not normal missiles. Oh. Like, uh, both your special missiles and your normal missiles are like capped. I mean, your machine gun is infinite, yes. But yeah, the other stuff, yeah, that is capped. Like, again, I said where it says on your uh, on the right side of your heart, the MSL, and then 53 left, basically. Uh, on, on harder difficulties, the machine gun also has limited ammo, but here on normal it doesn't. Target destroyed. Three to go. Continue to engage at your discretion. Oh, Enemy interceptors inbound. Prepare to engage in 30 seconds. Welcome. Here they come. The spinning is a good trick. Huh? Okay, recruits. Huh? Pay no? attention to no? who's on what side. The newest no. IFF is connected you to our entire force via satellites. Mickle. It's reliable, so Mickle. trust your radars. Well, I hope it's a reference to you dying.
Or I'm gonna press Y now. Yeah. Switch button. Why they withdraw? What? They gonna bring their buddies back from the dead? You know you don't have to hold down the button for every single missile you fire. <laughs> well, for ground targets I personally don't find it as, you know, fancy, but for air targets seeing them get shot on, it's fancy. I remember the red targets were your main priority. Keep an eye on your minimap as well, there you can see where they are, like if they're behind you or not, and plus also which target you're currently locked on, because on the minimap there it shows you, you know, the target you're currently locked on is blinking on the minimap, so you know which one you're targeting. And if someone's behind you, then again, as I said, remember, you can hold down a Y in order to, you know, focus on the target, so the camera turns, so you know the exact position. But, like, that's what I do personally, uh, like, when I fly, I'm a joy to time hold down the Y button. In order to see where my target is. hold on the button longer like I want the missile impact so you you know like it shows like the well the strike plane longer if you want to see that Shut up, man, I'm a mannequin Skyhawker. 
best pilot in the galaxy. <laughs> yeah, that crash and tries to do first mission. Fuck you! <laughs> fuck two, fuck two! You know, this game needs a hardcore mode extra for Grilda. Like, if you die, you, you gotta start the whole campaign again. Uh. But I again, I said, remember, don't, don't just run to shoot missiles, wait uh, till they're behind the target before you shoot. Otherwise, you know, the missile's just gonna miss when it has to do a high turn. That's not how you fucking dodge a missile, then. I don't care, I see it in the movie, that's how I dodge missiles. Shut up. Yeah, that's not how it works, this is in the movie. <laughs> uh, oh, yo! Oh, wow, I hit. Yeah, I said that is why I said like uh, uh, air targets usually require two missiles, while uh, ground ones uh, usually one. Uh, come on. Behind target and ready to attack. Ready to Four targets and Gorilla has seven minutes left. Can he do it? Yeah, I got a completely short amount of time. Yeah, you have 20 minutes. Break, missile incoming! Like, uh, uh, basically, uh, every mission has a time limit. Take one missile, you die. When you go down onto the ground, don't fucking accelerate, because when you accelerate, you only slam hard into the ground. But basically, the faster you are, the, the uh, less your plane turns, you want to slow down in order to turn higher. Plus, I gotta say, break and turn at the same time to do a high G-turn, to avoid hitting the ground. And not accelerate into the ground. I mean, gee, I know you see the side of the ground. I panicked! Okay, gee! Yeah, yeah, well, I, I know you see the side of the ground, yeah. <laughs> Cool, they should be close. Yep. Intercept! Holy shit, the actually hit. <sighs> it's popping off now, Trigger. War has officially okay. begun. Yeah, you know what, Bubek? I'm gonna eat some real quick. I keep on watching, and I'll be judging you from. Yeah. And let's see if you're still, uh, uh, what's it called, doing this mission when I'm back. So I'll throw back real quick. Target destroyed. Five to go. Get the fighters out there! Attack the radar vehicle! They've got their anti-air guns aimed right at us. Radar was just about to go online. Push the plan forward too fast. The base was too 
far from Allied territory.
Work, everyone. Mission complete. RTB. No casualties. We couldn't have done any better. Returning to base. Whee! I don't know. Maybe the bandits we took down caused civilian casualties. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. You shoot, someone gets killed. The guys in charge take care of the rest. Given us air superior. The first. Now is the time. Surprise attacks carried out after the declaration of war saw the peacekeeping forces of various countries, including Osea, suffer major damage. The ships moored around the space elevator and near Gandar Bay have been hit particularly hard. Numerous ships have been sunk and abandoned. Fortunately, our cutting-edge aircraft carrier Kestrel-2 was at sea, <coughs> so it was spared from the attack. Kestrel-2 is now preparing to launch another attack against Arugia's capital, Barbanti. The aircraft carrier Vulture also managed to escape Gandar Bay safely. However, it lost all its aircraft, so it's sailing empty. Today, the International Union Peacekeeping Force reclaims its bid to the space elevator. The Fort Gray's Island Air Base Squadron will rendezvous with the carrier Vulture for a joint mission. The first objective will be to seize air superiority in Choppenburg in order to secure a route for the support squadrons. The enemy maintains air superiority over Choppenburg, so expect heavy resistance from enemy aircraft. There's more, so listen carefully. Right from the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. They're using a new advanced type of drone. The unmanned airborne aircraft carrier, the Arsenal Bird, carries this new drone. MQ-101. The Ocean Army headed up the development of the massive arsenal birds and dispatched them to the space elevator to provide support. However, it's been reported that the carriers may have fallen into the hands of the Erujian forces. If that's true, it could be a significant obstacle for us. We need to regain control of the space elevator ASAP. Good luck out there. Well, this shit fucking took you long enough. Oh, shut up. 
<laughs> like you can complete this mission in five minutes, but Grot takes five hours, right? Perfect, <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm just gonna uh, stop freaking it though. Fucking what? shit. It takes so much time and effort. You just suck ass. I don't suck ass. Yes.